guys welcome to science learning hp i hope you people are doing great so as you know as you can see in the thumbnail that uh, cbsc has released a sample paper for the year 2022 to 23 exam right and the sample paper is both for class 10 and 12 so in this tutorial we are going to to have a detailed analysis of class 10 science sample paper and along with this we are going to discuss the solution of section a as the video will get little longer if we'll discuss all the sections so only section a will discuss in this one in this part okay so let's have a detailed analysis of the science sample paper you'll get an idea that which type of questions will be asked in the in your board exams so on the basis of that only will do your preparation for your board exam so it's very important to have a look and um, to understand the sample paper which is released by cbsc okay so let's start with the first question for, let's start with the the instruction which is provided by cbsc in the sample paper okay so see as you can see uh, the science sample paper sorry the science sample paper it carries 80 marks and it consists of five sections section a section b section c section d and section a in section a we have 20 questions carrying one marks each carrying one marks each so the so section a will be of 20 marks and in that all the questions are of objective type it means options will be given over there in section B, we have very short answer question. And how many very short answer questions will be there? Six very short answer type questions will be there carrying two marks each. So it will be of 12 marks. Now we have sec section C. In section C, short answer type questions are there. Seven short answer type questions are there carrying three marks each. So section 3 will be of 21, 21 marks. Now section D is of three long answer type question carrying five marks each. So it will be of 15 marks and the last section section E in section E we have case based study type of questions okay so there will be three case based study type question carrying four marks each so it will be of 12 marks so question paper will be of 80 marks right so let's start with section A in which all the objective type type questions are given along with the options See the first question which is given over there. Hmm. The change in color of the moist litmus paper in the given setup is due to. You can see the diagram which is given over there. It, there is one test tube. In the test tube, sodium chloride is there. So what is sodium chloride? It is NaCl. NaCl is neither is it nor pos nor nor is it nor basic. What is NaCl? It is a salt and it is neutral in nature okay after that someone has added few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid in this test tube conch h2so4 and this conch h2so4 what is the nature of conch h2so4 it is acidic or basic definitely it's acidic in nature so when someone has set a delivery tube someone has uh, attached a delivery tube in that in the test tube and bring one and and they have and someone has brought one moist litmus paper near the delivery tube then some color change was observed in the moist litmus paper what was the color change observed the moist litmus paper changes to red color okay it changes to red color why because in the test tube what was present acid was present and the acid was releasing h plus ions because of the presence of h plus ion the litmus paper changed to red color okay so on the basis of there four options are given presence of acid presence of base presence of h plus ions in the solution presence of litmus which acts as an acid so what will be the correct answer definitely the answer is presence of h plus ion in the solution because of the presence of h plus ion the color change was observed i hope you all have understood this answer now come to second question in the redox reaction so in which chapter we have read redox reaction in chemical reactions and equation the last reaction right in redox reaction mno2 plus hcl gives mncl2 plus h2o plus cl2 this is the reaction which is also given in your ncrt textbook so you can see four options are given over there mno2 is reduced to mncl2 so reduction means what removal of oxygen yeah this is true mno2 is reduced to mncl2 after that what is written hcl is oxidized to H h2o okay hcl is oxidized to h2o 
uh, then what is the meaning of oxidation oxidation means addition of oxy oxygen and removal of hydrogen but over there we can't we have we can see that oxygen is added but hydrogen is not removed so, but option a is wrong with respect to the definition of oxidation and reduction second op option is mno2 is reduced to mlcl2 true oxygen is removed and hcl is oxidized to cl2 this is also true because hydrogen is removed then oxi oxidation will take place so option number one is correct but let's have a look on the other two options also mno2 is oxidized to cl2 hcl is reduced to cl2 no this is not correct MnO2 is oxidized to MnCl2 and HCl is reduced to H2. This is also wrong. So our option number B is correct in which magnesium oxide MnO2 is reduced to MnCl2 and HCl is oxidized to HCl. Now let's discuss the next question. Question number 3. Which of the following is the correct observation of the reaction? shown in the above setup so you do you remember that this diagram we have seen in which chapter in the first chapter chemical reactions and equation okay so let's read the options which are given there okay so let's have a look on the things which are given over there someone is burning a magnesium ribbon okay and they have collected the ash in the watch glass okay uh, and whenever we'll burn magnesium in the presence of oxygen what we will get we will get magnesium oxide mg o so this is the ash this as is magnesium oxide so let's read the options brown powder of magnesium oxide is formed colorless gas which turns lime water milky is evolved magnesium ribbon burns with brilliant white flame and reddish brown gas with the smell of burning sulfur has evolved so what is the correct option option number c is the correct option because magnesium ribbon whenever you will burn a magnesium ribbon it will burn with a white light white flame so this is the correct option okay now let's discuss question number four with reference to four gases carbon dioxide carbon monoxide chlorine and oxygen which one of the option in the table is correct okay so see four gases are given and their uses are also written over there we have to say that which of the option is correct a b c or d so let's have a look on option number a co carbon monoxide is acidic in nature no it's not acidic in nature carbon monoxide is neutral in nature used in treatment of water chlorine yeah it's true production of res product of respiration oxygen okay product of respiration oxygen no it's wrong product of respiration is not oxygen it is used as a reactant in respiration product of incomplete combustion carbon monoxide yeah it's true but option number a is wrong because many of the options is like this option is wrong this option is wrong so we can we cannot consider option number a now let's come to option number b co2 is a acidic oxide yes it is a non-metallic oxide so obviously it is acidic in nature used in treatment of water yeah chlorine is used product of respiration carbon dioxide yes product of respiration is carbon dioxide and product of incomplete combustion is carbon monoxide yes it is also true so option number a b is true uh, but we have to consider c and d also c is acidic in nature carbon dioxide acidic in nature yeah it's correct use in treatment of water no this option is wrong product of respiration this is also wrong this is also wrong so we cannot consider c option d option acidic oxide no this is also wrong this is correct but this is also wrong so we have to consider option number b is the correct answer as co2 is acidic oxide chlorine is used in the treatment of water then co2 is a product of respiration and product of incomplete combustion is carbon monoxide now let's come to question number five okay on placing a copper coin in a test tube containing green ferrous sulfate solution so you have to take one test tube in that which solution you have to take feso4 solution ferrous sulfate solution and its color is green in its color is green and you are placing some copper coin in it okay it will be observed that the ferrous sulfate solution so when you place copper coin in the ferrous sulfate solution do any reaction take place copper is more acidic uh, copper is more reactive or less reactive than iron 
obviously iron is more reactive than copper we have seen in the in the activity series that iron is at the top and copper is at the bottom so iron so copper cannot displace iron from its salt solution we have read in the displacement reaction that more reactive element will displace the less reactive element from its salt solution but in this case copper is less reactive than iron so no reaction will take place in this setup no reaction so let's read the options turns blue and gray substance is deposited on the copper coin no why it will turn blue because no reaction is taking place second option turns colorless and a gray substance deposited on the copper this is also wrong turns colorless and reddish brown substance is deposited on the copper coin this is also wrong and d number remains green with no change in the copper coin yeah this is a true option because we know that copper is less reactive than iron and obviously no reaction will take place so green color will remain green only Now come to question number six. Anita added a drop of drop each of dilute acetic acid and dilute hydrochloric acid on a pH paper and compared the colors. Which of the following is the correct conclusion? See, one girl is there, Anita. She has add, she has taken one litmus paper and in that she has added few drops of acetic acid and few drops of hydrochloric acid. So which is a strong acid? Acetic acid or hydrochloric acid? Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. It will give more H plus ion. But dilute acid is a weak acid. Right? So let's read the option. pH of acetic acid is more than that of hydrochloric acid. Okay? So what they are saying that the pH value of acetic acid is more than the hydrochloric acid. Yeah, it can be true. pH of acetic acid is less than that of hydrochloric acid. No, it's not true. Acetic acid dissociates completely in aqua solution. No, it will not dissociate completely in aqua solution because it is a weak acid. It cannot, it cannot dissociate completely. It will dissociate partially. Acetic acid is a strong acid. No, it's not a strong acid. It's a weak acid. So option number C and D are totally wrong. We have to compare option number A and B. So pH of acetic acid is more than hydrochloric acid. We know that acids generally have a pH value. Acids will have a pH value between 0 to 7. And the acids which are strong in nature, they have a pH value of 1, 2, 3, like this. And the weak acids will have pH value of 5, 6, 7, etc. So obviously the pH of acetic acid will be more than that of hydrochloric acid. So option number A is the correct answer. Now let's come to question number 7. The formula of 4 organic compounds are shown below. Choose the correct answer. See, this is A number in that double bonds are present. In this also, one um, carboxylic acid group is present. Okay, CH3COOH. Okay, next one is ethane. In this, no double bonds are present. And this is an alcohol that is ethanol. In this also, no double bonds are present. So, on the basis of this, these structures, we have to answer the question. A and B are unsaturated hydrocarbons. No. A and B are no, not hydro, unsaturated hydrocarbon because there is no double bond between carbon-carbon atoms in structure B. So this option number A is totally wrong. Second one, C and D are saturated hydrocarbons. C and D, they are saturated hydrocarbons. They are asking to us. Next, C number, addition of hydrogen in the presence of catalyst changes A to C. Addition of hydrogen, if you will add hydrogen in A, it will change into C. In the presence of a catalyst, they are asking. Suppose I am taking pla pal palladium catalyst. So obviously, hydrogenation reaction will take place. The bond, this bond will break and hydrogen will be added in this one. Yeah, this is the chances over there. Addition of potassium permanganate changes B to D. This one, they are saying. But this will not be the correct answer. So over there, option number C is the correct answer in which addition of hydrogen changes changes uh, that in the presence of a catalyst to C because of hydrogenation reaction. Now come to question number 8. In the given transverse section of a leaf, in the given transverse section of a leaf, Identify the layer of cells where maximum photosynthesis occurs. So see guys, what we have over there is the part one, one they have marked over there. This is our, this is the uh, upper epidermis layer, right? The second part which they have marked over there, this total from here to here, it is chloroplast, right? 
and uh, the third one they have marked over there they are showing us the air spaces between them or we can see mm. and the last one fourth number they are showing us the guard cells or the lower epidermis they are showing over there so in which area the max we know that photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplast in leaf right Chlor photosynthesis will occur in the chloroplast so which option will be correct over there option number so photosynthesis will maximum it will occur in the second and in the third in this area photosynthesis maximum photosynthesis will occur in the chloroplast area so option number b is the correct one because it will not take place at the upper epidermis layer or at the bottom lower epidermis layer it will take place in the center in the chloroplast area now come to question number nine observe the experimental setup shown in the figure this experiment is also given in your textbook in life process chapter name the chemical chemical act indicated as x that can absorb the gas which is evolved as a byproduct of respiration see one plant is there they have covered it with a bell jar and they have kept some chemical in this container and they have named it as x so when plant which gas plant release as a product of respiration obviously they release carbon dioxide gas so the substance which absorbs this carbon dioxide gas what is the name of that substance we have read in life process chapter and the name of that substance is koh so x over there is potassium hydroxide that is koh because only potassium hydroxide has a feature that it can absorb carbon dioxide gas now come to question number 10 so 10th question is from heredity chapter if a tall pea plant is crossed with a pure dwarf plant suppose someone has uh, crossed a tall plant with a dwarf plant dwarf dwarf matlab means short plant okay then what percentage of f1 and f2 generation respectively we will be the tall so in the first generation in f1 generation we know that if we cross a tall plant and a dwarf plant all the plants will be tall all plants will be tall means 100 percent plants will be tall but in the next generation when we cross the tall plant with the same tall plant then what will happen in f2 generation 75 percent of the plants means 3 is to 1 ratio we have got the so 75 percent will be tall and 25 percent will be short so the correct ratio is 100 percent and 75 percent means in f1 generation we will get 100 percent tall plants and in f2 generation we will get 75 percent 75 percent tall plants now let's come to question number 11 compare the three figures given below which of the following depicts tropic movement appro appropriately so see three diagrams are given over there a b c we have to say that in which diagram the tropic movements are seen clearly okay so in a we can see that the both the roots and the shoot they are bending towards the gravity this is not true because we know that root bends towards the gravity but shoot will bend towards the light in the section second option we can see that both root and shoot both are bending towards they are showing the tropism towards the light but this is also not true right in third figure c diagram we can see that root is showing movement towards gravity and shoot is showing movement towards the light root is showing positive geotropic movement and shoot is showing positive uh, positive phototropic movement so our option number c is correct okay option number c is the correct answer in which the root is showing positive geotropic movement and the shoot is showing positive phototropic movements now come to question number 12 the diagram shown below this is from reproduction chapter how do organisms reproduce depicts pollination so what is pollination transfer of pollen grain from anther to stigma is called pollination so choose the option that will show a maximum variation in the offspring okay so in uh, you can see two plants are there over there so in c in process number a what they are showing cell pollination is going on in c option also cell pollination is going on in the same plant in option number in in the process of b cross pollination is going on and in op, process d also cross pollination is going on so in which of in cell pollination or in cross pollination variations can be seen variation means differences where we can see the variations in the offspring obviously in cross pollination we will see the variations so which option will be the correct one option number b is the correct one b and d process will give maximum variations to us now come to question number 13 a complete circuit is left for left 
is left on for several minutes causing the connecting copper wire to become hot as the temperature of the wire increases the electrical resistance of the wire so this chapter is from your ma for from your electricity chapter see so when when the temperature increases right so electrical resistance what will be effect on the electrical resistance we have read the heating effect of electric current h is equal to i square rt i square rt so heating effect is directly proportional to the square of the current resistance and temperature so when temperature will increase electrical resistance will also increase they both are directly proportional to each other now come to question number 14 a copper wire is held between the poles of a magnet okay one copper wire is there and it is held between the two poles of a magnet north and south you can see in the diagram now let's read the options the current in the wire can be reversed the pole of the magnet can also be changed over in how many in how many of the four direction shown can the force act on the wire they are asking that if they changes the current in the wire means the direction of the current and also if they will change the poles of the magnet means south will become north and north will become south then in how many direction the force will act on the wire in one direction two direction three direction or four direction what will be the correct option we know that by fleming's rule what we have read by fleming's rule uh, in magnetic effect of electric current chapter that force on the wire that force on the wire is perpendicular to the current in the wire right by fleming's left hand rule we have read that force on the wire force on the wire is perpendicular to the current to the current in the wire and the magnetic field also and the magnetic field also that is there are only how many possibilities are there only two possibilities will be there the direction of force will be in only in only two direction in upward direction and in downward direction so the correct answer is option number 2 okay according to fleming's left hand rule the second option is the correct option that only two directions are possible upward and downward directions now come to question number 15 plastic insulation surrounds a wire having diameter d and length l one wire is there whose diameter is d and length is l as shown in the figure a decreases in the resistance of a decrease in the resistance of the wire would produced by the increase in the so this uh, which relation is there area of cross section length of the wire diameter d etc we have read this okay so what we have read a decrease in the resistance of the wire resistance means r and if resistance will increase then what will happen if resistance will decrease sorry if resistance of the wire will decrease then in the wire what would what would be produced by an increase in the so there is some inverse relationship between what resistance and resistance and diameter so if resistance will decrease then there will be increase in the diameter of the wire okay there there will be increase in the diameter of the wire we have read one relation resistance r is equal to rho l by a that is area of cross section so if resistance area means your uh, you can write by r square this is the area formula so if resistance will increase definitely the area of cross section radius or diameter that will decrease so there is a inverse relationship between that so option number b is the correct one now let's come to question number 16 which of the following pattern correctly describes the magnetic field around a long straight wire uh, straight wire carrying current from magnetic effect of electric current so let's read the options S straight lines perpendicular to the wire straight lines parallel to the wire radial lines originating from the wire and concentric circles centered around the wire so what is the correct option we have read that uh, when uh, whenever the magnetic field will pass when whenever magnetic field will pass through a straight wire uh, straight wire carrying current or it will be the concentric circles are formed near the wire near around the wire right we have seen that concentric circles are formed you can see in your check your ncert books so option number d is the correct one concentric circles around the wire now from 17 to 20 question we have assertion reason type of questions are there so let's discuss the assertion reason question see so we have to mark a if both a and r are true and r is the correct explanation of a if assertion is also true and reason is also true and r should be the correct explanation of a then we will mark option number a 
but if both an a and r are true but r is not the correct explanation of a then we have to mark b and if a is true but b r is false then we have to mark c and if a is false but r is true then we have to mark d so let's read question number 17 first silver bromide decomposition is used in black and white photography yes it's true agbr when photolytic decomposition will take place in presence of sunlight it will break into ag plus br2 and this reaction is used in black and white photography assertion is true reason light provides energy for this exothermic reaction so is this exothermic reaction no it's uh, uh, the reaction is not uh, yeah it's a exothermic reaction light is providing energy but this is not exothermic reaction it is endothermic reaction because sunlight is absorbed in the reaction so reason is false so what is our correct answer a is true but r is false so option number c is the correct answer for question number 17 now next question question number 18 Assertion, height in a pea plant is controlled by efficiency of enzymes and is thus genetically controlled. See, whenever we will see a height in a pea plant, it is controlled by the enzyme and that is that is also controlled genetically. Correct? What is the reason? Cellular DNA is the information source for making proteins in the cell. Both assertion and reason are true over there. And reason is the correct explanation of it. So, which option will mark over there? Option number A. Option number A is the correct answer for question number 18. Now we have the last two questions that is 19 and 20. See for question number 19 what is the assertion? Huh. Amphibians can tolerate mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Is it true? Amphibians can tolerate mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Yeah, it's true. We know in amphibians, they can tolerate that because they are cold-blooded animals. So, the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood, they can tolerate. Amphibians are animals with two-chambered heart. No, this is not true. Right? So, which is the correct option? Option number C is the correct option. A is true, but R is false. Now, the last question. 20 number. On freely suspending a current-carrying solenoid, it comes to red in the geographical north-south direction. Yeah, it's true. It will come in north sound direction. One end of the current carrying straight solenoid behaves as a north pole and the other end as a south pole just like a bar magnet. Yeah, it is also true and reason is the correct explanation of assertion. So option number A is the correct one over there. So we have discussed all the questions from section A guys. All 20 questions we have discussed. If you want the solution for other sections also B, C, D and E then do comment in the comment section. I will come up with the solution of these questions also. So thank you for watching Science Learning Gateway. If this tutorial is helpful for you then do like it, share it and with, with your friends also and if you are new to my channel then please subscribe to it. So thank you for watching.